apparently I don't need permission. I mean, you were. Yeah. Wow. It says got it. So welcome to the to the meeting. Start if you want. To. There you go. Hey, yeah. good morning, everyone. We just started recording for the Orlando Modern Quilt Co meeting, and this is like the prequel. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome. Prequel. How are you doing, Deborah? Moving and everything. I've been like sporadic on my social media. So um, um it was a tough move, I gotta say. Um oh. moving away from everything that's family and familiar was tough. Yeah. Um, but but things are good. We're we're getting used to it. We're um done a couple things to our kitchen to make it feel more homey. Um, you know, it's a 30-year-old home, so it requires some TLC. Yeah. But I mean, just the idea that I'm only 30 minutes from my daughter. Last week, she called me from Nashville in a little, she was all upset. She had gone for a, a special eye doctor appointment. They dilated her eyes. And we have this family issue that once they dilate your eyes, your day is done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. me yeah. too. Blue eyes. Yeah. It's the blue eye thing. Yeah, so we had to, um, we had to, drive to Nashville, which is, it was an hour and a half each way, pick her up, pick up the car. So, I mean, it, it was a chore, but it was like, this is why I'm here, you know? Yep. Good. So, Good. Yeah. And, and I fly to Florida tonight, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I thought the timing was kind of, kind of interesting after the guild meeting, not that it matters right. since it's virtual now, but um, yeah, it doesn't really matter, but yeah, I fly tonight for my son's 30th birthday. Oh, okay. Ooh. Fun. It's my first like full week vacation. I'm going without my husband. Are you going to work? No. Oh, oh, good. Vacation. Whoa. Not at all. Oh, real one. I'll pay for it when I get back though. You know how it is. <laughs> all you people who worked in your lifetime, you, you pay for it on both ends. <laughs> Yesterday I went to work for, cause I wasn't gone. I was gone for a week too. And it's just amazing how people do things the way you don't want them to do it, you know? And it's like, oh my gosh, I, I was there two hours extra because I had to catch up on stupid stuff. Yeah. I'll probably you wish they had left it alone. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Hey Carol, you have some new glasses. Yeah, are those, I just lost them all. I went to enlarge my screen and I, I lost all of you. Apparently I'm still here. You're there. Yeah, you're, you're here. here. Okay. With your beautiful you're pink glasses your and your Tommy t-shirt. Oh, I see you. All right. So how do I get you all back? Let me see. Yeah, I think my lighting is light. I'm going to change my lighting, but. It's a little bit dark, Debbie. It is. It's gray out today. All right. Launch meeting. Oh, wow. Upper right-hand corner, Carol. Uh, you? Yes. Yes. You know what? I think I'm just going to go out and come back in. No, hit view. Oh, <laughs> hit view. Hit view, Carol. I don't that gives you the choices. No, no, no. Okay. I have, I mean, I've just gone back to the launch meeting screen. Oh. I've totally lost, you know, my gallery. So I'm just going to go out and come back. See Try you? hitting escape. Try hitting escape. Oh, okay. Uh, nope. No. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Well, you're good and clear. Oh, there you go. Right. Yay. I don't, I don't know how, but I did. Okay. <laughs> good morning. Deborah, oh, I'm dying baby. to know. Um, did you move to Tennessee for work? No. I'm I work remotely at home. Uh-huh. So my daughter, um, her husband is in the military. Uh-huh. And they got stationed in Clarksville, Tennessee. Yes. And I have a really, really uh, close relationship with my son. I mean, I have a close relationship with both of them, but if I call my son, we'll talk for an hour and a half. If I call my daughter, we'll talk for two minutes. And I won't <laughs> know what's going on in her life unless I'm here. And I wanted to build my adult, my relationship with her as an adult. Uh huh. You know, I wanted to grow that. So that was the primary person, you know, reason to move here. Oh, good. Oh, good wow. for you. Oh, boy, you, you, you only had this time. I mean, <laughs> well, and love seems to be the, the main motivating reason. <laughs> well, 
I don't know why I'm so dark. Let me clean my screen. Does that work? I don't know what's making me so dark. You're not dark on my screen. You're yeah. not dark. It, it's not clear though. It's not yeah. crisp. Yeah, it's like fuzzy. I know. Yeah. I don't know why. Well, that's what I like. It takes away all the wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that little Carol, girl, that Carol little you're as clear as a bell. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. <coughs> you took off your pretty pink glasses, Carol. Well, I, I didn't, hold on. I didn't need them, need them to see you. I had to have a mind to get into oh, the computer. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, these are my, my, my dollar store glasses and I get the bright colors so I know they're mine and not Rob's. <laughs> he doesn't I'm sure it looked lovely in them. <laughs> In, so I'm having my breath. You know, you know what they say about glasses. When you wear glasses, it's like it's like jewelry on your face. Ah. So you should get something that you like. I hadn't thought about that, but that's true. Yeah, yeah and you wear them every day, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, are, you in, are you at home or are you on the river? Oh, I'm at home watching my husband dig up the backyard. We're going to have a huge stump um, taken out, and he doesn't remember where the sprinkler system is. <laughs> it's like a big mole, you know. But oh. he's working so hard, so <laughs> it'll be good to get rid of it. I still have your book for you. Oh, was that a good book or what? Yes, I love it. Yeah, that. very sweet. Yeah, very sweet. But that author has written more books about the same people in that neighborhood, but I honestly can't say that I'm motivated to dig into them. Who's um, I, I want the one to stand out. What book is I, it? Uh, um, a uh, man called Uwe. Oh, yeah, I like that. Oh, yeah. Uwe, Uwe. That was Howard. really good. I didn't like yeah, many yeah, of his other on. books, though. Well, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I, I don't want to read the other ones because I don't want to take away from that one. I know it's silly, but. Yeah. No, there's yeah. nothing. I, I think that's funny. A one we all longer. had the same. We all had the same reaction. We loved the first book, and then I was looking forward to the second one, and I went, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> I didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anxious people don't don't. That was a man called what? Obi. No, it's Uve. Well, Uve. Uve, I guess. Ove. Ove. Yeah, Ove. Yeah. The re yeah, I couldn't get into that. I sent it yeah. back. And with any really, really of us, worth reading, very good. Yeah, and with oh. any of us that live with older men, you know, of course, because we're older, <laughs> it's just some some of it kind of comes home. Oh, and it reminds you of your dad and your granddad and and yeah. eccentric people you've known. Yeah, yeah. but it, it it's a book you have to get into to appreciate. Uh, it did not get me right at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, kind of works up. Yeah. So I actually um, listened to it as an audiobook. I missed who said that they didn't get into it, but I had it in a book that I was listening to, like while I sewed and cleaned and whatever. I think it might have been easier to get into because of the rhythm of listening. Uh huh. Um, mm -hmm. but I loved it. I loved it. I love audiobooks. I do. I'm going to forget how to read. I know. I agree. <laughs> and you know, if it's a, it's a person, I don't like to listen to male readers, though, narrators. Oh, I like the women narrators for some reason. It's really funny how you, I, I can't get into a book if it's a male narrator. Mm -hmm. And it's really funny how important the reader is, because oh, yeah. um, I had one and the, it was interesting, but she had this rhythm that drove me crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would end yeah. on the same note at the end of a sentence. And it was just like, no, I can't listen to this anymore. Yeah, and when it's an English accent, I can't figure it out either. I don't like that. <laughs> anyway, oh, look, I there think there was military time. She's starting right now. <laughs> Hi, yes. Kim. I just want to ask a couple questions before we get started and forgive my little, if you touch your screen, it moves forward. Um, is Edie on the, on the line? I don't see her, but it's not. She's gonna be in. Yeah, in Colorado or someplace. Yeah. She's traveling, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So she said she might pop in. So I just want to say hello to her and say hello to anybody. Is there anybody here this morning? Um, welcome everybody that's new. 
speak up. <laughs> is there anybody who's the first Zoom meeting with us? Hey, this is Lynn, Linda Norton. Yes, I'm new. Hey, welcome. Hi, Hi Linda. Hi. I don't have my I don't have my video on because I'm not sure that I can sit here the whole time. So I'll just I'll just leave my video off. Okay. Are you going to be able to join us next month? I'm. I hope to. Yes. Wonderful. Well, speaking of next month, welcome. And the next month meeting, October six, will hopefully be at the Maitland Community Outdoor Park for our annual fabric sale. If you look in the newsletter, it has the exact address of it. And um, that meeting is going to be a fabric sale. So each year, almost every year, or sometimes every other year, we have a really fabulous um, fabric sale. And it's really fabulous because you all donate and we all donate our fabric as a donation. And then the funds that are raised are put right back into our, um, our treasury pot. And so we each get to, it's almost like a fabric trade as well. So the directions for how to prepare are also in the newsletter. Um, just collect your fabric and label it. And there should be some tables or some set up if anyone wants to volunteer to help show up a little bit early and um, just help direct people a little bit to that so again that's at the october 6th meeting if you have any can questions I, can yeah. i chime in this okay. is marge um yeah so if you don't if you don't plan on coming to the meeting and you still have fabric that you'd like to sell please contact me and I'll get it to there. So we'll either get, you know, find a place to meet to pick it up or uh, I'll pick it up, whatever. So don't, if you're not coming and you don't, and you still have fabric, by all means, send it to us. All right. And then the other announcement is that the Maitland Sew Days have resumed. The next one will be September 13th. Now, I think that last month there was only one person that showed up. So we kind of want to get an idea if anyone might show up to that. Mm -hmm. No. Is there Nothing. any yeses? Question again. The Maitland So Day. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably not. No, I can't. No one plans on going to the Maitland So Day on September 13th, live and in person. Oh, my husband has a doctor's appointment that day, of course. All right. Of course. So, I would, Elizabeth, is, I, I would go. Betty Baker said she would go. Betty yeah. Baker? Anyone yeah. else? The reason I'm I, asking is I don't want Betty Baker to show up by herself. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think uh, Jackie Clark is interested too, but but she doesn't do the, the uh, Zoom meetings. Okay. So, Betty, do you have Jackie's um, email address in the directory? Oh, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to ask you to reach out to her and coordinate a little bit to see if you both want to meet there. Okay. And okay? didn't Judy Sanders come last month? And maybe you want to make sure she's going to yeah. come also. And then we'll see if we can make an email announcement about it. I just don't want anyone to show up alone. Like Judy did last month. Like Judy did last month. But because there also is a so day, a Zoom so day on that date as well. Different people. All right, Sue has some community outreach updates for us. Good morning, everybody. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that um, the exchange days live at They're the sewing that. studio. Um, some. Somebody's uh, not muted, so it's coming up. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, I'll continue the exchange days at the sewing studio if we do not have an in-person meeting. So I'll be there the third Monday of September, but I won't be there in October. So just to let you know that uh, we're continuing this exchange days. And there's usually somewhere between 
eight to a dozen people that come, if you've been there before, it's, it's kind of, hey, hey, how are you? We're all wearing masks and it's out in the parking lot. So feel free to come if you've got something to turn in. It's been working really well um, to turn in uh, books, the library books. I've got a couple of books there. And if there's one there that you like, you can take it with you. But I don't have the whole collection of uh, library books. It's, it's just too much for me to carry. The books that I do have are ones that people have turned in uh, because they couldn't get it back in any other way. All right, next, um, QuiltCon and Festival of Trees. Each year we do the Festival of Trees at the Orlando Museum of Art. And we've donated a quilt for many, many years. It's always prominently displayed in the middle of all their trees and, and it's always beautiful. I like taking pictures of it each year, but we have to have a committee to do it. So I've had one person uh, email me since the newsletter, it was brought up in the newsletter. I had one person email me and said that they'd be willing to serve on the committee. Um, but we need more people. So if you'd like to serve on the, the committee, we have to design it, uh, produce it and have it already by somewhere like the first, uh, first week in November, I think is when, when we have to have it done. So if you'd like to serve on that, let me know, because if we don't get a, a um, you know, a committee, then we're not gonna be able to do the tree. Uh, I mean, do the, uh, the quilt. The same thing with QuiltCon. Uh, I have one person who emailed me that would be willing to help out with the QuiltCon uh, quilt. Uh, it's their community outreach uh, uh, project. And you just go on the website if you'd like to get the instructions. Basically, it is a uh, curves, I think. No, I'm sorry. Now I'm not, no, I'm completely losing it as far as what the, what the project is. But it is a uh, twin size quilt. So that gives you an idea of what size they're looking for. But anyone who would like to serve on that committee, get me an email, shoot me a, a text message, whatever. Um, and um, I'll get you on, you know, try to get everybody together. Uh, Charlene has been uh, coordinating our incubator covers, the taggies and the pillowcases, and uh, people have been bringing them into Exchange Day. It's, it's been really great, keep it up. Um, that's going to be ongoing until probably the first of the year sometime. And then um, also the uh, placemats are also going to the um, Seniors First for the Meals on Wheels uh, uh, clients, and we're ongoing with that. And um, Jan Bilbro is not, did not uh, renew her membership this year, but she is still doing the um, drawstring bags. And I delivered a batch of them to her a couple of weeks ago, and she's still gung ho. So if you're still making the um, drawstring bags, I'll take them and get them to Jan. Um, otherwise, you know, thank you everybody for all your donations. We've been really busy during <laughs> the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, so keep it up. All right, thanks. Sue, so, um, I know that uh, somebody just asked about what is Exchange Day. Our new our new member asked that. Oh, so okay. Well, when most of the time when we've got things to turn in, either completed quilts or such, we bring them to the meetings. But because we've not been having in-person meetings, um, Aradri and I started last year to do to meet in the parking lot at the sewing studio once a month. And we picked the third Monday of the month in order to have it consistent each month. And so if you've got anything you need to turn in as far as incubator covers, books, uh, pillowcases, any of those uh, ongoing things that we're doing, you can ha hand them in to me. I also have got, um, Leslie Gill has made some great, um, uh, <laughs> batting has cut the batting for the, the the placemats so you can pick that up from me too but that's kind of well you call it exchange day because that's basically all I'm doing the only meeting is those people standing in the parking lot with their masks on saying hi how are you so and we always have a good number thanks but it's Mark. always the third set their third Monday of yes the month. Third so month. This is, you're only going to have one in September because in October we're going to meet so exactly exactly okay. We've done that for COVID, Linda. That's what we were doing. 
Yeah. Also, um, somebody asked about, she also asked about what is so days. And I think, you know, we can just explain a little bit where be pre COVID we used to meet every once a month at certain libraries or certain areas and anybody in that area would come and sew. you bring your sewing machine, you bring your, your hand sewing, you bring whatever you want to work on, you get a table space and then you just sit and chat and sew. So that was. Another now we're doing it by zoom. Yeah, now we're doing it by Zoom. That's right. And it's and it's basically five days a week too. So and there's there's usually there's about six or eight people who are are faithful to that every every week. Right. Um, can I add something to that? Yes. This is Mary. And um we also have them every Saturday from one to three. Every weekday oh. to twelve, every Saturday, one to three. And I really do invite anyone who hasn't tried one to come. It's a lot of fun. We talk a lot. We share information. We see what the other people are doing. It's, it's really a nice time. Also, the, um, the uh, sign-in for the Zoom meeting is the exact same sign-in and password that we use for our general meetings. So keep those, those numbers together and you can sign on to any so day, anytime you want to. And Linda, there also was a uh, calendar that was sent out of the so days and um, the ID, you know, the, the Zoom ID and password. So you'll, okay. if you'll see that there too. Yes, Marge, and, I got that. Thank you. Okay. Wendy also asked Charlene if she needs. I'm looking at the. I'm I'm looking at the chat. That's why I'm talking. But um, Wendy also asked if Charlene needed more um, rows for the uh, isolate covers. And I sure hope so, because I've got three of them sitting here still. <laughs> That's great. Yes, we do. OK. OK. Whoops. Hey, somebody is sewing and not on you. <laughs> That's kind of fun. But um, it's Jennifer. Yeah, there you go. Hey, Jennifer. Thanks for muting. Um, Charlene, did you have anything to add about the incubator covers? Yes, I do. Uh, I just wanted to clarify some things because we haven't been able to, to meet in person. We um, There's actually three different ways where you can participate in the incubator covers. And the first one is a row by row. Maybe you can see behind me, that's what's well, folded in half, but that's uh, the uh, row by row that's finished it up. It's you know bright and colorful. Um, I, I personally, like it and you can continue to make it just one row and um, send it in at the exchange day and, and that's great. But I'm hearing that some people don't like that so much. And because I don't want to encourage the use of profanity, <laughs> I have come up with two, where well, there are two more alternatives. The second one is just to make your, your own, whatever, whatever you want to. If you want to do the whole, whole quilt, that's fine. The size is 48 by 66, which I admit is kind of uh, different for us, non-standard. Uh, but I found out that not to worry if it's a couple inches one way or the other. So if it's, you know, the standard is 48 and you come in at 50 or 46, that's fine. Same thing with the, the length, uh, not by a foot, but a few inches, that would still be great. But so I'm going to offer a third way to help with the incubator covers. And here, instead of a little, um, several little uh, blocks put together in a row, I've got a big old whopper here. Oh, like this, like this. You know, you see the quilts that are, um, um, what do they call them? X, X's and O's, hugs and kisses or uh, X's and O's, this is the O or the hug from, from the X's and O quilt. So I'm kind of thinking of that as an Orlando hug. And I would like to suggest that anybody who wants to could make even just one block and that would help increase our production of the incubator quilts. Um, I'll put, I'll put a, um, instructions on the Orlando Modern Quilt Guild members only Facebook uh, page today. And it'll be the same thing, bright, cheerful colors, uh, scrappy, wider, or, or um, what do we call that when you have a little print on there? Scrappy white background is great. Low volume. Dark, low volume, there you go. Um, and a dark back. So there have been some questions about what is a dark back. It does not have to be black. Uh, I, for example, on that one, I don't know if you can see. 
it's a red. Um, so a dark fuchsia, dark gray, medium to dark blue, any of that is fine. We have three members who have offered to do some quilting for us, Wendy, Carolyn, and, and um, Mary. Um, Wendy did that one behind me, and it, it is just beautiful. So I'm encouraging people, if you know, choose one of those three ways. If you, if you would like, these incubator covers are going to go to the NICU at Winnie Palmer. And my only question is, are there any, is there any funds in the group for, in our group for uh, backings for any of these quilts? That's a good question. What was the question? Are there any funds in our, our account for backing for the incubator cover quilts? Oh, I'm sure we could come up with some. Okay, yeah, great. I've got I've got some I've got some budget. So if if you want to do that, we should be able to do that. Yes. And we could okay. also maybe pick some from the fabric sale too. If people are bringing in fabric and it's big enough, we can get it from there. Okay. Yes, if we get yeah. like a four and a half, yeah. five yards sure. piece, something that we can, you know, maybe two different pieces <laughs> we can together, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Have any questions for me? Well, anybody also that wants to give some backing too, by all means, well, give it well, to Charlene. What I was going to say, my I haven't been able to do any tops yet, but I'm more than happy to um, give you some backing fabric. That's the least I can do while I'm trying to get organized to do some. Tops. Oh, if, if people want to bring the backing fabric to Exchange Day, I'll take. Um, I'll I'll get it to Charlene. But make sure it's dark, though. Yes, sure it's got to be dark. Charlene, do you need people to do binding? Oh, if we if we start getting some significant response, yes. Okay. Are you a possible for that? I'm a possible for binding. And Me I can too. I love to bind. Pops <laughs> together, but quilting you can give to somebody faster. <laughs> okay. And I'm um, willing to help quilt if quilting on my home machine is good enough. And okay. I'm, I'm happy to bind. That's love. Wow, I'm taking names. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Please tell us the size for the backing that you would like for donations. Well, it kind of depends if, um, you know, a long armor is doing it, they need, you know, a little, quite a bit more on both. Was it five? Wendy, did you say five inches on both sides? Well, she's not here right now. So that would make it. Four or five inches, yeah. Okay, so basically 50, 50, 58 by uh, 76. Yeah, I, this is Jolyn. I've done a calculation on that because I plan on making another incubator quilt. Um, if you're doing the standard 42 inch wide um, fabric, it's three and a half yards. If you do 108 inch, it's two yards. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad somebody yeah. knows math. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking it's more like four and a half yards, but that's great. Yeah, and that's with the five inches around on all sides. So the 58 by 76, that gives you plenty to get backing um, to go on a long arm. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Thank you. Well, a uh, huge thanks to Sue and Charlene for the consistent community outreach, but not just to the two of them um, for leading a lot of it, but for everybody who is willing to um, assist, no matter how big or small it is, it all adds up. So Absolutely. thank you, thank you so much. All right, Marge, do you have some information about the retreat and education for us. Sure, I do. Um, we, it's st you still have time to um, to sign up. October fifth, I think, is the deadline. Um, also, uh, we have a we've had a, our first committee meeting, and we've got lots of fun plans. So that's good. Uh, one of the things that we did um, notice is that Sarah is not having a great time trying to get people to give door prizes. Um, you know. Uh, companies and stuff. So we thought maybe we could do what we did last year with everybody, and not everybody, but if you have a door prize that you think is interesting and that people would want, that you would want to get. So think about that. Don't just give me junk, but if it's a door prize that you'd like to donate, that would be wonderful. Um, we can, I'll be at the October meeting. We can um, give them to Sue on exchange day. If you have anything that you think that we would we would like to have as a door prize. Um, also, I figure what I would do is if people will give us some good fabric, um, then I think I'll maybe pick and choose some nice fabric for, for door prizes. 
So, um, so keep that in mind, please. And um, I think that's all. I don't have a whole lot on um, on um, education, obviously. Um, what's her name canceled, uh, Jackie. And uh, but I am looking to get somebody for January for a Zoom meeting. So that's our next um, education. Mm -hmm. March. Yes. I just want to ask anybody who's going to the retreat, if you have orphan blocks that are yes. just sitting around and you're not going to use, if you could bring them. Because my sister every year puts them together for quilt tops. Yes. And that's, and she makes some beautiful quilt tops yeah. and I've already got a, I got a few of them myself. So I keep that in mind with, with orphan blocks, anybody that has horse orphan blocks and don't know what to do with them, please bring them. Or if you're not going to the retreat, give them to, give them to one of us. I, you know, like I said, exchange day, um, or any other time. Yeah, I could pick them up at the meeting too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's it. All right. Thanks March. Any questions? Yeah, I've got I, I got one question. Sure. Um, last month, I think that uh, Zonetta asked if she could come and just sew because she can't, you know, she can't spend more time away from home. And you said it was all right. Um, does that, because of her special situation, does that go for other people too that just, just can't stay overnight? Other members, yes. I, I don't think we want to open it up to anybody else, but other members, absolutely. Just let me know though, so I have a count of how many are coming. Yeah, yeah. They have to. They can't just walk in one day because they decided to. But I do know that Zanetta wants to do that. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, just a quick thing about the newsletter. If anyone here, or if you know of anyone that is not receiving the newsletter email, please let us know. You can, um, if you did not get a newsletter, was it yesterday or Sunday or when did it go out? This week. <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> Sunday. If you didn't get a newsletter email this week, then please email us. Let us know. You can send an email to the Orlando Modern Quilt Guild. You can email myself. Um, is there anybody here that didn't receive an, a newsletter email? Wendy, Wendy is showing on chat that she didn't get one. Who? Wendy. Wendy? Okay. I may have a fix for, uh, ooh, pretty. I may have a fix for some of the people that are not getting them. Uh, if you're on AOL, on the left hand side where it tells you what types of emails you're getting. If you'll pull down the slide bar and look under promotions, you will find it there. Oh, okay. And Mary Martin just said she's not getting it. Um, that's actually true in my Gmail as well. It goes into promotions and I have to pension um, it goes over there just the sheer number of people getting it throws it over to promotions mm -hmm. the, the trick part about aol if you just look to the side you don't see promotions you have to pull the slide bar down and i think promotions is the last one or the next the last one wendy and mary are you um are you aol yes i am i'm aol all right Go ahead and can you try that trick but i'll i will let them know that you're not getting it right now. hello hello <laughs> <laughs> wendy are you aol she must be on mute or she might have left she might have left all right i've got the names down um next i keep teasing you with a photo that um pamela edwards has of a quilt at the African American Museum of Arts in Deland. So just a reminder that here she is with this lovely, lovely quilt. Do you want to add anything? Um, I just wanted to let you know that the museum is um, open on Monday through Friday, Monday, um, excuse me, let me say that again, Wednesday and Friday from 10 to four, um, I will give you 
If you need to, I can give you the address of the museum. It is 325 South Clara Avenue in Deland, Florida. And the phone number there is 386-736-4004. Um, and the curator there is Mary Allen. Okay, so if you really would like to go to the museum and you can't make it that time, um, call the museum and, you know, she might be able to meet you another day. You know, they've cut back their hours because of COVID and everything. Um, for those who didn't know, what the quilt is representing um, was basically a memorial of the lynchings of African Americans in this country. The idea of it came from Equal Justice Initiative, um, which has a museum in um, Montgomery, Alabama. And they, what they've done is they've gone around different areas of the countries where um, Blacks were lynched and they've collected soil and put them in the jars. And I've been thinking a while with all the unrest that happened in the country to do a social justice piece. And then when I saw this, I was like, okay, well, let me just try this with the jars and how were people killed? It was on a tree. So that's why there's a tree and the jars are on there and that's what the jars represent. And it's in different colors because where you pick up the dirt, maybe in one area, it was a dark dirt or clay. So the colors are, that, that's why there's different colors in the, with the jars. Um, someone else had asked me, and then my other image with the jars down on the ground was, you know, maybe someone couldn't get a body. Maybe people, you know, people couldn't collect. A lot of times when people were lynched, um, families fled. And a lot of them, a lot of people think it was only in the South, but it was across the country that a lot of lynchings had happened. Um, so maybe a body really wasn't recovered. So that's where I looked at, you know, maybe someone fell, there's bodies on the ground, it's deceased. So that was sort of my representation with the jars that are on the ground. So the quilt will be there until October 2nd. Um, also in the area of Deland on September, Saturday, September 25th, um, the Volusia County is, um, going to be someone who was um, lynched, they will be doing a jar collection for their, um, for Volusia County. It will probably, I think the jar will eventually end up in the museum in Montgomery. And it is supposed to be, they're still working the details out, um, but I think eventually the jar is gonna be um, displayed at the times there the newspaper there in um, DeLand. Um, and they're also going to have, uh, I think there was a bus that was made of Mary Bethown, Methune, Mary McLeod Methune, and um, they're trying to put the two together. They've asked me possibly that the quilt would be there, but we're still working that out. And right now I've gotten commissioned to do another quilt for the Volusia County Equal Justice Initiative for them. That is amazing. Yep. I have a question. Sure. I'm I'm from Deland. Is her is her quilt going to be at the museum? This quilt is there at the museum right now. Um, I remember the, with I'm with another quilting group from Hannibal Square there in Winter Park, and. Um, the leader of that group is Lauren Austin and Lauren and Mary were friends and they asked if the group could just present quilts. So there's, um, I think there's about 10, 10 or 15 quilts that some of the other women have done in the group that are all displayed there at the museum. Catherine, it's the African American Museum over on Clara, not the art museum on Woodland. Right, right, right. Okay, you make it sure. And you said the museum. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. in Colorado and, and Springs, so I'm not going to get there. But I've got a friend who's on that committee, and I 
he had mentioned the quilt and I'm just so happy to see a picture of it so that because I'm not going to get there to see it but I just think it's so beautiful and I'm really touched that you would do that and uh, and the yeah. whole thing if everybody do some research on that it's a very important project thank you for being mm -hmm. part of it yeah thank you thank you can you give us the dates that the quilt's going to be there? It's Pam? there now, and it'll be there until October 2nd. Ooh, so we have to hustle. Okay. <laughs> but a whole month. Okay. It might, I will know later, my quilt might be there a little bit longer, only because they might keep it in the museum there with the jar that they're trying to collect on September 25th. Um, and yeah. I'm, Still, I'm not sure of the exact date when everything will happen yet that will be mm -hmm. at the um, newspaper that they're trying to do with um, Mary McLeod Methune. I think they're honoring her because it's an anniversary for her. And then they asked if possibly, but I, I'm trying to find out the details, like where exactly does the newspaper want to house it or display it? And we haven't gotten all those details yet. Uh, Pamela, if you've got a good close-up photo of that, I'd love for you to send a copy to me if you can get it, get it to me sure. on the email or something. Or if you're getting a, you know, if you're getting a poster made of it for yourself or anything, I'd love to buy a copy. Um, it's not a poster, but actually I gave them permission to print it for the cover for the September 25th brochure. So it will be there for that. I'm not sure how many copies yeah, of that yeah. they're making, yeah. but it will be on their cover since that since it's part of the project that they're going to do on September 25th. Well, I used to work with the local local newspaper there, and they probably okay. have a good shot of it. And I'll check with the the Beacon is the newspaper, and I'll check with them and see if they've got mm -hmm. a good copy too. I don't know if they have a picture of this. Um, I'm not sure who came. Um, I think I sent the article the first time that was in last month's newsletter. So mm -hmm. it had what was displayed there at um, the African American um, Museum and the article that went on went there when they had the opening on July 17th. So it's been there since July. Okay. Um, all the quilts. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. But I'll send you um, I'll send you a picture, Catherine. Thank wow. you for sharing. Thank you everybody Thank for you. your um, for your input too. Uh, next, we're going to have a program on geometric quilts. But before we just start that, I want to remind you that after that, we're going to have a live show and tell. We're not doing the photo show and tell, but a live one. So this gives you just a chance while that program is going on and paying attention to get your show and tell quilt prepared. And so we're going to talk a little picture. bit about if you could, um, if you could imagine <laughs> a bunch of ladies getting together and deciding to make a quilt together. I mean, when does that happen? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> All the time in our group. So a few ladies, Marge, Paula, and Beth got together and decided to make a geometric fun quilt. It is a quilt that they chose from Quilts My Way, and I'm gonna mess up this Polish last name, even though I'm Polish, by Gosia Polaska. And they, two of them were gracious enough to allow me to um, quilt their quilt. So we're gonna just talk to these ladies and talk about the quilt a little bit. Um, Gosia Polaski says on her website, she's a quilter pattern designer, and a fan of color from Poland. For me, quilt making is the perfect combination of creativity and a technical challenge. I love making modern quilts and paper piecing projects from start to finish creating my own patterns. So that's from Gosha. And then here are our, um, here are some questions for our, our panel. So I'm gonna ask, how did, or who came up with this quilt originally? Who found this quilt online? I so did. Me, oh, 
Yes, but let me correct, like Alejandrina, you missed Alejandrina's name in the little thing too. So Ale yeah, Alejandrina no. and Beth and Paula and I were the ones Probably because it didn't fit in the slide. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and Alejandrina knows that I know you were part of this group, so I Oh, uh, I know you do, because she, <laughs> she did the quilting, so yeah. Yes. But Beth was the first one that during COVID, we were emailing each other and of course Beth came with this picture and went, oh, look at this quilt. And sure enough, we said, oh, I wanna make it, I wanna make it. So we, the four of us went shopping. I think we went to the quilt place. It had to be pre-COVID because we wouldn't have gone there during COVID. But anyway, we- I don't all, remember that. They were closing down the shop. Yeah, that's right. They were closing down the shop. So we all went shopping and I know that we all picked our colors. Beth, were you with us? I think you were. I was not. No? Okay, but it was Paula, yeah. Alejandrina and I then. Yeah, I know Paula was there. Yeah, but anyway, we decided we wanted to do that. And um, then during COVID, because I was alone and horrible, <laughs> um, Alejandrina and Beth were kind enough to be to come over and they'd spend the night and we quilted this together. So it was a, certainly a challenge during COVID and we had so days every Friday and drank a little wine afterwards and they'd spend the night and we'd, uh, we'd do this quilt, so. But yeah, go ahead, Alejandrina and Beth, you can add. Well, I, to me, this quilt was, uh, an exercise in humility, really, um, because we started saying, oh, you know, I can do this, no problem. I'll wing it. And it turns out you can't. So we, you can see here, this is the old traditional cut the templates, right? Mm -hmm. And make sure you cut them precisely and you mind where you put the line to make sure that you know it's accurate and stuff like that and um it wasn't easy that's what i would say <laughs> so each week the author yeah there's the quilt there you can each, see how complex that is wow each week the author would um put on facebook that she would get the pattern free so we'd always try to make sure that we would get the um the pattern that day and that because like she had like each square that you see there is for pattern you know what i mean so it's not like um it was very involved and the the patterns were involved but she um then she would sell them on etsy for a dollar so we'd go out and we'd buy the pattern for a dollar and i used a lot of ink up that week because trying to print these templates because you, like alejandrina said the templates were so exact and you couldn't just, in fact, I thought to myself, oh, I'm just gonna just measure, you know, I'm, I know that this is, uh, you know, four inches, I'm just gonna do it with the ruler. Well, you couldn't do it with the ruler because if you notice all four of the blocks in one big um, area, they had to match because the next one would run into the other one. So you had to have the templates in order to make sure that they, they butted up to each other correctly. How many total blocks were they? Well, four, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's 36 plus and four in each. So each one has four. So- And there are my, some, rep there's some repetitions as you can see mm -hmm. on the top left, there's yeah. four of the, you know, on the, of the same pattern, but um, they're like, was was it 25 different ones or yeah probably yeah. a lot yeah i think it was about 25 so it cost us 25 dollars for the pattern which really you know sometimes less sometimes more you know but it wasn't so bad but but another problem we had too is um the scant quarter inch i mean like i just i started out with my blocks and it was supposed to be nine and a half inches each block well because i was thinking that i was going to be a rogue and just um you know, just do it by measurement. I ended up with nine inch blocks. So the templates that Alejandrina printed couldn't even be used for me because I had to I had to downsize my templates 
to be nine and a half because it was so intricate. It was very, very, you couldn't mess up. You couldn't, there was just no way you could change it because as you see, they they move together. You know what I mean? Like one square has to match the other square because it's a succession line. That's so gorgeous. So I that's know. Alejandrina's quilt. Yeah. Gorgeous. This is Alejandrina's. And I made I made mine one row shorter because I just didn't have enough of the blue fabric, which is just as well because it's it's a gigantic quilt. And if you want to hang it on the wall, it just doesn't fit. So this is big and, enough for me. Yeah, How and I made this? the whole quilt and I added some because I wanted a king size quilt for my bed. Right. So I I made mine bigger. Now here's Bess. This is she's she's a talker. She likes to come and enjoy us and uh, talk and not quilt as fast as we did. <laughs> I don't quilt as fast as you guys, no matter if I'm talking or not. <laughs> but I had such a large stash of fabrics that I thought, well, I'm not going to follow the color pattern that Gosha had for this quilt. So I just had all these fabrics on the right and I put all these blocks together. And by the time I got two rows done, I could easily see that the pattern, the geometric style of this quilt was not going to show up with me using so many different fabrics. So I wound up taking apart a lot of the blocks and redoing them yeah. like on the left here so that the style, the geometry of this would show up better. And she lost a few. Yeah. And go back. I, to I have found them. Yeah. <laughs> go back here. Again. Yeah, so I'm so. still working on mine. Mine is nowhere nearly complete yet. But I really love this quilt. I it's will just, say, when we were looking at the uh, templates for these, they have two templates with different numbers, like one was number three and num one was number 15. And when you're looking at them, they are exactly the same. And I'm thinking, what, why would you do templates for something that's going to be the same. So I just use number three instead of number 15. Well, when you do that, it's like a 16th of an inch difference and the lines don't match up where they need to. So then you get to go back and take that all apart and use the right template. You just yeah. couldn't second guess this woman. No, it was amazing. It, you can't improvise. You can't you just have to really follow what she says. And if you look at the quilt, I mean, like that round, those round circle, the, you know, the middle round circle on the top, that was four, four squares. So you had to match it and you had to be so very, very precise, was very that? precise. But it was certainly fun and it gave us something Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. And the camaraderie, we just had a ball. It really, they saved me from uh, COVID because, you know, as I, I, as everyone knows, my husband passed away before COVID and then COVID hit. So I was pretty lonely. <laughs> so it was, it was certainly camaraderie. It helped me a lot. Well, it Marge, took, is this your, how, how many as months did it take, my, Marge? Pardon me? How many months did this take? This took, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> A good eight months, I'd say. I would, I would say, yeah. 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 Is and that I, the back I, of yours, Marge? That's the back, yeah. yeah. I, I had to piece, as you see, because it's so big. It was a, it's a king size, and it's a pretty good size king size. So, yeah, yeah, that's it on the bed. It's beautiful. I love it. Wow. And of course, the quilting was just yes. fantastic. Yeah. Yes. So. Yes. Deborah did the quilting, of course. And um, she did an unbelievable job. So she she worked right through every single square and it just, it's beautiful. And what was so much fun about it is that all of them are beautiful. They're all so different. You know, it's, it's, 
it's gorgeous. Like best colors are like, oh my gosh, it's amazing how it's all going to just blend together. And now Alejandrina and I and Paula, Paula picked the colors that were exactly on the quilt pattern. And she hasn't started it yet because she's hurt us too much because <laughs> we did a lot of, <laughs> lot of griping about it. But um, Allah, Beth and I picked out colors that were, you know, like how many colors were in the quilt. That's what we use, just different oh. colors. But like Beth is just all over with her colors trying to be, um, you know, trying to make them all mix. And she's got more of a challenge. Yeah, but I, I love the differences here. Um, the three quilts are all three so different. And <clears throat> I think I quilted these back to back with one quilt in the middle. Um, but just having like going from marges, all of the white space that um, was able to just have some free flowing quilting on it and then moving to Alejandrina's bluer quilt. Um, these were just some of the best quilts and geometric quilts for me are the best quilts to quilt because there's so many choices that you can do when you have um, large areas like the, the circles or um, a lot of repetitiveness in the smaller circles that you can create a, a, a semi-graffiti design. Because mm -hmm. even yeah. though the, I, cre I quilted both of these in a graffiti method, there was a lot of repetition in the same repetition that the quilt had. So these are super fun. I felt like I felt like part of the project through the whole thing because um, I watched them do it and I saw their challenges, saw them ripping it apart. Um, <laughs> and there were days where I was so glad that I didn't make one, but there was a lot of days I thought, oh man, I'd love to have this quilt in my house. Yeah, maybe you and uh, Paula can do it together. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. And Bear enjoyed it too. Yeah, that's a favorite favorite picture that's a great there's picture, your yeah. assistant that's my yeah he's my assistant is i'm literally looking at him sitting in the same same manner right there um, <laughs> so it what was, was fun quilt. it was we've talked a lot about the challenges of this quilt but if you could say one thing about the favorite part visually of the quilt or in making it what would be another favorite thing about the quilt itself the camaraderie i mean that that was just you can't you can't replace that it just was spectacular we enjoyed each other so much and we enjoyed working together on it and laughing and complaining and learning from each other and, and i Mark think we would have fast we would have not we were so we got to find out what mistakes were to be made from her <laughs> yeah and, and we we would i don't think i would have finished this quilt if it hadn't been for the rest of the group, it, it just right. wouldn't have happened. Right. So. Yeah. Exactly the reason for quilting together. Yeah. I mean, that's what yeah. quilting was for. It was a group effort, and whether you were hand quilting all together, or whatever. But this is exactly why people start quilting. It, mm -hmm. you know, it's a group effort. Yeah. Beautiful. We will, uh, Nimi just uh, asked where we can get the pattern and I will, will find it for you and send it to, to, to you. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's still on, on Etsy. Her, it's still on Etsy. Yes, it's on, in her Etsy shop and it is Quilts My Way. So if you quilts look up way, Quilts right. My Way, you'll oh. get her blog and she'll lead you to her Etsy shop. Is that, is that the current status of your quilt bath right there? Um, yes, that's the current status and soon to be improved upon, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I would never have done this quilt by myself. Uh, I got to do a table this. runner. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for the group, for the team? I have a comment. I think yes. that this is this is probably the closest that anybody in the group has done to an old fashioned sewing quilting bee. Yeah. Well, thanks to COVID, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're, we're trying with the solar flare quilt group too. That yeah. is true. That is true. And I'm it's enjoying like that one too. So yeah. Yeah, I really want to make that quilt as well. And I, I haven't. I've got a king size quilt of my own. I'm still trying to finish, but 
the solar flare quilt, if you're um, interested, is a quilt pattern that's on the Modern Quilt Guild, and we have a group that's working on it together. Who's leading that group? Remind me. John. 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 Vanderwerf. The, though I have to say, I'm listening to the meeting with my solar flare block and my seamer in hand. So a little bit of precision. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so it's similar. <laughs> No, definitely easier than the geometric to fake it a little bit. But yeah, uh, putting the blocks together, there were those of us who had a little trouble getting to the 17 inches. <laughs> so, careful with your seam allowances. And press open. Yeah, I think one of the one of the rules is you always have to use the same sewing machine that you're sewing with because you oh, never oh, want to yes. change yeah. those Absolutely. Um, quarter inches. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody for sharing. Or any other questions or comments for the group? No. Show and tell time. I am gonna stop sharing. And what we can do to, if you wanna do, to take best advantage of um, the show and tell if you're not showing or telling, if you could put yourself on mute and remember to unmute if you have a question. And then if you click on the top right view of your screen and show speaker view, if you put it on speaker view, you'll see the person who's speaking and hopefully the person that is showing will be speaking. Any questions about getting it on speaker view? How about if you put in the chat that you've got show and tell, and then I'll I'll monitor the show the chat room to do the order. How's that? All right, that's great. I can see the chat room now too since I'm not sharing. Okay. But yeah, if you um if you have a show and tell, go ahead and put it in the chat. But I need a person to go first. Who do we have to go first that has a show and tell? I'll go first. All right. All right. Okay, so here, let me see if, can you see me? I'm on speaker view. Yes. Okay, all right. So here's something that I made, it was from a magazine. It's a wall hanger. Can you see it? Because I can't, oh, here. But it's all, I, it's all my scraps from um, Case. And I put this together and I'm hand, I'm hand quilting some of it just to make, you know, make it uh, more lively. Anyway, it's little houses. I love those circles. Yeah. Do you see um, the houses? The circles. Can you see it? Can you see it? Okay. Is that better? We got it. Okay. You got it? Okay. So now I have one more thing. Did you make that pattern? No, it was from a magazine. I forget what magazine it was from, okay. but it's, it was easy because I needed some hand sewing. So I, I, that's all hand sewed. It was all my little trips that I've made. So I've um, embroidered the stuff on it. But now here's, um, here's a quilt that I made. It's so cute. I'm really enjoying my machine embroidery. I got to tell you, my uh, embroidery machine. But can you see that it's just, just a scrappy pink and one, but I made um, appliques that were from the hot air balloon. Can I, I can't see, hold on. Let me get my view because I can't see at all. Hold on. Um, view, I need to change view, speaker view. I don't, it's weird that I don't, I can't see, there we go. Okay, now I got it, now I get the picture. So anyway, this is um, pink and grays and it's got all different machine embroidery and um, I've decided what I'm going to do trying to figure out what to make my quilts and what to do with them is I'm going to, um, I have 22 great nieces and nephews, so I'm making a quilt for everyone. 22? Wow. Wow. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many I have sitting there that I just don't want to give away to charity. So I've got, got you know, so this way I'm going to give them to somebody that I know, and uh, that's one of them. All right, I'm done. All right. Wendy, you have one that you're binding? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. 
I, when I looked at my speaker, I was on your headphones for my speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can hold it up high enough. Let's see. Can I, can you see? Wow. Yes. I don't That's know beautiful, Wendy. How much you can see of it. <laughs> but I'm actually, um, I, I looked and it was the 21st of April I started it. So uh, I don't know. If Gorgeous. Is, I don't know how I can, uh, I don't know, can you see further down? Yes. What's the name of what's the name of that pattern? I've seen the pattern before. So it, pretty. Um, boho heart. That's right. That's and I right. made it. I literally made it with all of my cave scraps. I didn't cut into yardage at all, but I did have to buy background yardage because I don't own any background yardage. <laughs> That's beautiful. Very very pretty. So Wendy, I, wonderful. I can't see you. I don't know where you are. Oh. And I can't see the quilt. And I know boho. I want to try. I want to make that. I have that a to do. And I haven't seen it. This is being taped, right? Yes. Okay. So then, at least I can see it there. For some reason, I can't see you. That's a. That's bizarre. Oh, maybe. Let's see what my video says. Oh, my video says I'm on just regular. Mm. I'll be darned. You're I not think on the any problem of the has to be on Marge's end. I can see. Windy and the quilt just fine. Yeah, I'm sure it is fine. That's so weird. <laughs> but yeah, I decided that I wasn't going to. Oh, here you are. Oh. Now show it just real quick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Oh, wow. Wow. Talk, Windy. Wow. Okay, thank you. But that's why I'm binding because I decided I didn't want to machine the binding on. I wanted nice binding. <laughs> All right. Is it just the one? Just <laughs> listen to yeah. me. Just one. Yeah, oh, just the one. Just the one. I've been slow. <laughs> Mary, Mary, do you have one for us? I do. Um, at and I'll show it, but first I'll just say that people who have been at So Day on Zoom know I've been working on these little tiny drunkard's path, these the cutting templates, they're tiny. So I, I bought a set of um, two sets of the mini charm packs of West African fabrics to make for a friend of mine who was born and grew up in Nigeria. And I ended up with enough to do the two sides of a bag and then I didn't have enough to keep making the whole fabric. So I just took the big squares to make the edge. But that, and then I made a couple of mug rugs of the same things. I just have gotten hooked on these miniature drunkard's path things. They're, they have to be stitched, but they're just fun. Thanks, so Mary. Beautiful. I needed another obsession. Thank you, Mary. Uh, oh, I wanted to mention this bag, by the way. I don't know if anybody likes it or not, but this is a free pattern on Biani.com if anybody's interested in kind of a big, well, it's a small duffel bag. But anyway, it's called Easy Do you Does want it. to? Can you, can you put it on the chat? I'd like to be able to get that pattern. Sure, I will do that. And Debbie Zop, do you have a, a quilt for us to show? I do, but I have other fun stuff that I've also made on for embroidery and showed it at the embroidery club for those who would like to see and learn how or just listen to us, either, either or. And I'll let you look at my chest too. Butterflies, <laughs> lots of butterflies. <laughs> who Ooh. does that look? Oh, really pretty. Who doesn't love a butterfly? And for all of those girls who attended So Days, thank you so much to listening to my moaning and groaning. <laughs> wow. My Halloween quilt, which I started at retreat uh, Zoom last year and did get it finished for Halloween this year, which is like a minor miracle. <laughs> and that's all folks well 
may I just add one? That is thing? amazing. Because oh. I've seen this quilt, you should show the ghost faces up close. She made everyone a little different. All the eyes are different on the ghost, so they all are different. I should have known Mary <laughs> loves the eyes on the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and there we have it. <laughs> wow. Wow. Anyone else? Do you have any alibis for um, quilts? I'm going to mention on... Um, Debbie's quilt only because I've been there on so days that when she looked at it, that each one of those she embroidered. So each one of those patches are machine embroidered. Yeah. Wow. Oh, the, the Halloween quilt is uh, raw edge applique. So if you see a different color, it's another piece of fabric. <laughs> it's not panels. Well, thank you, everyone. If um, I do know that uh, QuiltCon submissions are open now. If anybody wants to submit one of their quilts to QuiltCon, um, you can go on to the Modern Quilco website and find the submissions. And if it's your first time submitting anything, and if you want to have some questions answered, there's two things you can do. They have a way that you can like pre-look at the submission guidelines and look at it that way. But also if you have any specific questions, um, you can email me. So I encourage um, some of you to enter your quilts because, wow, this group is amazing. <laughs> I have something to share. I, I know I knew, but I thought I would start uh, small. I don't know if you can see this or not. Nope, maybe you can't. This was a fat oh. quarter. Can you see it? Yeah. This is a fat quarter project for another group. And I thought, okay, let's just start small with all of this. So hopefully this qualifies. Yeah, they have a mini category. Okay, thanks. Well, there, is there anything else anybody has before we wrap up for today? I have a I question. Just, yeah. Do, we, do you know, well, not you won't, Deborah, but anyone else, anyone locally that holds the uh, quilt con, you know, the fabric for the challenge quilt? Mm. Um, you know, uh, where are they? Excuse me a minute. You know, the Wyndham, these, uh, the Wyndham ones. Oh. Do we know, is there anywhere locally that has them? Mm -mm. It, they're like shot cotton, they look like. Hold them up, Wendy. Oh, no. These. Whoops. Can you see them? Talk. Talk, Wendy. Talk. Yeah. There, it says it's, um, where am I? It's Wyndham Artisan Cotton. And it looks to me like the um, CAFE shot cottons. But it, it also gives a list of the colours that you can put with them to do a quilt. But, you know, last minute Lucy here. <laughs> Time's running out if I'm going to do it. <laughs> but I don't know where to get the um, cotton from. I didn't know if anyone knew locally. I, for a different project, I looked all over town for those artisan, artisan um, and I could not find them anywhere locally. People have the Wyndham fabrics, but they don't have the artisan. Oh, right. Okay. I'll have to look online more. Thank you. I just want to remind everybody that we do have the machine embroidery group. And to, you know, if you can make it, I know a lot of us have been traveling and we're going to meet September 16th. And what's the other one is the 30th. And we're meeting on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. And we're using the Zoom. So even if you, you know, started or, you know, signed up, and kind of miss the meetings or anything, just join in. And if you've got something that you've worked on, just go on and, and you know, you can show it. And, or if you want to be added to the group, just let me know, just send me or Marge an email. And, um, and we can add you in on the list when we might do reminders for the meetings. So I've been sending out the reminders and I've been trying to um, also, if not, then just to text you. So we're very informal. So I am 
not the expert. I am the novice here. So it was just- And I'll tell you, I've learned a lot. <laughs> I have learned a lot from that group. Yeah, yeah. so- a little just tidbit. interested, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just picked up tips and stuff from each other or things or just trying to share something. And let me just add, like I do every time, that um, the so days are really nice. If you want the camaraderie of and a lot of uh, advice and help and information plus conversations that are on everything at you know all, the whole world, uh, think about joining a so day. We really those of us who go off and have come to rely on that for our social lives, I guess you'd say during this surge, it's great company, but I've also learned an awful lot from that group. So just consider coming to a so day, any weekday except the, the guild meeting day from 10 to 12, Saturdays from one to three. We do have some people on the weekends who work and can't come the other days. And um, it's just, it's a great group. I just recommend it yeah. to everyone. There's a hardcore center of us who all, you know, <laughs> go almost every day, not every day. And you might only spend 20 minutes or you might spend the two hours. But I have really gotten to know these ladies. You know, yeah. they are my friends now. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's talk, great. We talk families, we talk about politics, we talk about anything. We meet each <laughs> other's and I I give you a lot of credit for keeping me sane the last year and yeah, mm -hmm. last year. So I have a question too. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Two things. I, well, based on what Mary said, when I was coming to those so group dates on a regular basis, I loved it. And then recently I haven't been able to, but I plan on getting back. But this is also, this is for Marge. Marge, I have, when Bernina shop closed, I bought 10 charm pack bundles. Who knows what I thought I was ever going to do with 10 charm packs. But anyway, I do, and I'll be glad if, if those, any of that sort of thing is appropriate for door prizes for the retreat, or if we want to give them out for, for, for whatever, you know, I'll be Please. glad, to, you know, to get them great. to you. I'll probably use a couple of them, but I have 10 of these things, and that's a lot of charm packs. Oh, I, I would really appreciate it, okay. because what we do need charm packs for some other thing, too, so that's okay. perfect. Thank okay, you. they're ones that they put together, so I really can't attest for, you know, yeah the the fabric and how it all goes together or any of that sort of thing but uh, if you can use them you know i'll be glad to get them to you okay so if are you planning on coming to the october meeting or not yes yes i'm planning okay. on it at this point in time things are getting a little better david had a stroke and so yes had some yeah. issues with that are we still do but anyway uh i'm playing want me to bring them then okay please i'll do that i'll do that. great thank you so much okay. you're welcome glad to thank you for taking them Well, <clears throat> I have a question. Yes. Uh, I, I have uh, gotten into the bad habit of collecting sewing machines. I think I paid, <laughs> I sold one to Deborah what, it was two years ago or something. I found another one the other day. It's an old one that's a treadle that somebody got a hold of and put something electric in it. But is anybody in the group into old machines or have a res resource for? identifying old machines or stuff like that um yeah jeff knows he can tell yeah. you everything you want to know about it yeah okay good i'll get in contact with him because this is a real frankenstein somebody put some sort of kenmore machine in it and it's an art deco cabinet with an Ooh. art deco treadle on it and i mean it's just so cute but the machine that's in it is electric and it's like you know, it's just awful. And I've just got to figure out what to do if I can get it all to work together or what's going to happen. But uh, but that would be good. Thank you. And Shelly, her husband works on machines, so he might be able to help you too. His name is Ben. Okay, thank you. Shelly Doyle. Thank you for sharing. Well, <clears throat> I guess it's time to say see you next time. <laughs> Thank you everybody for, um, for sharing and participating and volunteering. And it's really nice to see some of your faces. Um, it is. I'm far away and I really appreciate seeing all of your smiling faces and seeing all the adventures you're having. <sighs>
Deborah, thank, De thank you for leading us from Tennessee. Thanks, Thanks oh, Debbie. You did a great job. Thank you so much. Yeah. Good Fun. seeing y'all. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Deborah, who do I send this recording to? Um, is it?